Outside the courtroom today, solemn faces, no smells. These friends and family of a young woman, a mother brutally murdered on February 28, 2011, want justice. The accused, Osmar Sabido, was escorted to court to hear his fate. In his defense, his attorney, Oscar Selgado, claimed that Sabido was attacked by Carrasco, who tried to stab him. On the stand, Sabido had given sworn testimony that as they struggled inside the home they shared, Christy Carrasco accidentally fell on the knife she was holding. Justice Herbert Lord took almost two hours to read his judgment. Osmar Sabido, guilty of the murder of Christy Carrasco. I am... I can go home now. And I know he won't be able to hurt anyone. He has hurt us enough, and, and I think he got a just sentence life. He, he shouldn't be among us. He doesn't deserve to be when in our community. He got what he deserved, and I am so, so happy. The prosecution called 13 witnesses during the trial, including four who were on the scene to see a bleeding Carrasco run away from Sabido, crying out for help. Of great weight in the case was the fact that the medical examiner testified that Carrasco had been stabbed four times, twice to the left side of the chest, once on the thumb, and once on the left knee. He characterized the stab wounds to the chest as having been inflicted with heavy force, and the injury to the thumb as a defensive wound as Carrasco tried to protect herself. I am indeed surprised by the ruling because I am still of the opinion that the defenses raised, that of self-defense, provocation and accident. Having looked at the evidence, I still believe that there was self-defense and that there was accident involved I am still convinced that the evidence itself does not add up to a conviction. On the stand, Sabido testified that he was attacked inside the home and that Carrasco accidentally fell on the knife twice inside the home. The judge did not accept his story as credible since no blood was found inside the home, just outside where witnesses say they saw the couple just before Carrasco screamed for help. That is my ground of appeal that it was never established, it was for the Crown to establish whether or not, first of all, how long did the brawl took place. A fight like that could have been opening, up and opening one minute. And then she ran outside. So within that minute, there was no, there is the possibility of no blood being inside the house. Also, the prosecution is saying that the forensic the scenes of crimes technician, senior scenes of crime technician, found what was a white or a liquid, a, an odorless liquid, covered inside the house. Nobody, nobody went on to venture. What was that? Was that some sort of chemical that could have hide blood? Was that some sort of cleaning up for the blood? For the judge to base his decision solely on that fact, and that was what he did. Base his finding solely on the fact that there was no blood inside the house so that the incident did not occur in the house is, is, in my opinion, my humble opinion, strange. Sabido's testimony was further lessened by testimony from three rebuttal witnesses. The accused, now convicted, claimed that he arrived home at 6 that evening and Christy Carrasco started arguing with him, an argument which later led to her death. But three rebuttal witnesses swore that Carrasco was with them from 5 to at least 8, and the judge accepted their testimonies, essentially discarding that of Sabido. He was attacked by the deceased. That is my instructions, that is what he relayed to me. And I verily believed him very much. The judge's own opinion came and the judge's own conviction came because there was no blood inside the house and that the accident, the, the brawl could not have ins occurred inside the house. Therefore, Osmar Sabido was not truthful. He further said that because Osmar Sabido was not at home at approximately 6 o'clock, what was said to have provoked the brawl could not have been said and done at the time. My thing is this, again, that is not here nor there, because he said approximately 6 p.m., approximately 6 could be 7. And the three rebuttal witnesses that were brought in ex improviso all said approximately 7, approximately 8. So they again were a lot of approximately approximation in time, if is. 
And I mentioned that to the judge, that you cannot take an iffy and counter another iffy with it. So Sabido's fate has been sealed with a conviction and a sentence for life in prison. Well, he is disappointed. He is disappointed because he had an honest and reasonable belief that first he was under attack. And so that the defense of self-defense was taken away and discarded by the court. So he was, in fact, yeah, disappointed. His, well, I've told him from the beginning that wherever there is a judge sitting alone without a jury, the judge takes all the consideration, the facts and the law into account so that he must keep an open mind and that there is always the room for appeal. That this is not the end of the matter, there is always the room for appeal. If you do something, you need to pay for what you have done, especially to an innocent person. My daughter didn't deserve what she get. You know, she was a sweet, loving person. Oh man, I just, I just wish it hadn't happened at all that I could still have my daughter here. <laughs> Justice served, maybe, but it can never bring back Christy Carrasco, murdered at 22. Mike Rodon for News 5.